Okay, hi there, Jeff back again with another diagram video. Uh, let's spend a few minutes just working through the output gap diagram. So the output gap uh, is a measure of the difference or the gap between the actual level of GDP in the country and the estimated potential output. So a positive output gap means that the level of GDP in a country is well above, if you like, the long-term trend, where we'd expect to be, uh, which might then be a sign of rising cost push and demand pull inflationary pressure. It's not inevitable, but it's a sign that there might be excess demand in an economy. Whereas a negative output gap means that GDP lies below potential output, Often, that's the result of a prolonged downturn or just very slow growth of GDP, which leaves an economy with a degree of spare capacity, including perhaps uh, underutilised capital and uh, some unemployment. So here's the diagram. Let's walk through, walk through this one. I'll use the neoclassical model. You can see here the equilibrium level of GDP is Y1, and that lies some distance to the left of YP, which is potential output. So the output gap is the distance AB, because actual GDP is below potential. Now, if there's an increase in demand, let's say we have stimulatory fiscal and monetary policies, aggregate demand shifts out from 81 to 82, then we move up the supply curve. An expansion of short-run aggregate supply takes us to a new level of GDP Y2, and the gap between national income and potential output is closing, so we're hoping to close a negative output gap. Can we, and that's uh, now AB, that little distance is smaller than it was before. Now, sometimes you can have very high levels of demand. I've kept AS uh, aggregate supply curves as they were. Much higher demand, AD3, uh, consistent, for example, with a boom in consumer spending or perhaps very high levels of government demand. At AD3, actual GDP there is in balance with supply at output Y3, which lies to the right of potential output. Um, hence, there's a positive output gap when GDP is greater than potential GDP. And that's not necessarily sustainable. Again, in that situation, the economy is running a little bit ahead of itself. Output is above where you'd expect it to be in an economic cycle. Here's the data for the UK. You won't necessarily be asked to, asked to draw this in the exam, although one or two students might do it. But the key thing is the output uh, gap varies around zero. In other words, if it's above zero, it's a positive output gap. If it's below, it's a negative one. And we're expressing this as a percentage of potential GDP. For, so, for example, the global financial crisis led to a recession, didn't it, if you remember that? And that led to quite a severe negative output gap of more than 4% of GDP. Then the economy gradually recovered. The output gap closed reached zero around 2017, 2019. Then the, then the dip uh, in the economy during the pandemic. But since then, the upper gap seems to have become positive. Uh, according to the um, government figures that I've been drawing on here for this chart, there is in fact a small, albeit positive, output gap in the UK. And perhaps that reflects the fact that GDP growth has picked up very strongly. Then it increased by something like six and a half, seven percent in 2021. And also we're reading about these supply shortages. Uh, lots of industries running up against capacity constraints and skilled labour shortages. So perhaps potential GDP has been affected by uh, net, net labour migration falling, a rise in economic inactivity and a fall in investment. So nothing to be too worried about, but the economy probably at the moment is operating ab above its potential. And that could be one factor on the demand side perhaps causing a rise in inflation. Anyway, there we go. That's a quick little primer for you on the output gap diagram. Take care and see you soon.